and Buenos Dias, Darlington, County Durham. Darlington FC are known as the Quakers because a group of them bought this building in 1678 and have been here ever since. A simple walk from the station, you come out straight down the hill, straight to Thetons, it's five minutes. Uh, by road, Darlington is also very easy to get to. You come straight up the A1, uh, turn off at the A66, come, follow the signs to see Teesside, you come into town, see the signs for Darlow, you follow those and you'll soon see the floodlights. There's lots of off-street parking around the grounds. You don't have to pay a great deal of money and it's just there. It's so easy to find. It's unbelievable. Assuming they're coming from the railway station, then there's several pubs in the Victoria Road area. But in the town centre, which is very nearby the ground, there's a vast variety of pubs. It's a nice market town. It's pleasant. Uh, you can get very good meals and it, it doesn't cost much at all, it's relatively cheap. Built in Darlington, the world's first passenger train, George Stevenson's locomotion number one, left for Stockton in 1825. Only well, got there in 1828. I run the uh, DAFS organisation, that's the Darlington Away for Travelling Supporters. Uh, I'm living in Reading, I'm a season ticket holder, go to all the matches on Saturdays some of the midweek games as well. It's just a means whereby people who are living the, you know, close by each other all over the country can get together you know, and, and uh, make it a bit cheaper to come to the games. Uh, the, the, you know, that's one of the primary reasons for it. Currently we have 525 addresses, uh, which is about 800 fans uh, who are involved. Now not all of them are you know, going to every match every week, but at least they feel part of a group and they, they can contact each other with respect to sharing travel, have, uh, meeting each other for a drink, etc, etc. But uh, internationally, I mean, the Australia, America, Canada, uh, New Zealand, uh, but there's all age groups and, and we have uh, a lot of female members as well. It's not just uh, typical sad old, sad old blokes like us. <laughs> Darlington FC were formed in 1883 and since joining the Football League in 1921 have been in the bottom two divisions for all but three seasons. They've also been here at Feedhams for their entire club history, that is, until next season. I think for a lot of people also, it's, this ground is very special. It's difficult to tell now, but when the sun's shining and when the trees have got leaves on, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, quite, it's, it's beautiful, a very beautiful, very beautiful sign. Yeah, yeah. The West End over there was built when the previous one burnt down, which was the 60s. Uh, the opening of the floodlights versus Millwall. Five, good 5-2 five win against Millwall, oh. and uh, there was some cabling linked with the floodlights. Stand burnt down overnight, and then they found, much to their chagrin, that when they got the uh, insurance certificate out of the safe, it specified that they had to build exactly the same stand out of wood and corrugated iron. <laughs> so they had to put up a new one, which was the same as the 1930s one. Tin Shed was built in about 1960. Yes. That, that used to be an open end. It just used to be um, black cinders and a few white posts. And there was always an ambition to put swivel seats in, so if the game was really bad, you could watch the swivel around and watch the cricket. The stadiums are given, so, so we, we're going. Uh, and I think the problem is you, you can always be accused of being too nostalgic. I think they should have developed uh, Phaetums. We actually have just been discussing it. And maybe we should have bought the, the ground off the cricket club and uh, built a new stand over the far side. It's a great idea, but 3,000 people in a 25,000 seat stadium, no atmosphere, very poor I'm afraid. Well, we've got 3,000 hardcore fans. Uh, yeah, one or two more will come next season, might get up to about maybe seven or eight, but uh, 25 will push it. But it uh, depends how high in the divisions we get. 12 months ago, everybody said, well, I've heard it all before, it'll never happen. <laughs> and, you know, and all of a sudden, uh, it was a dream. Yeah. Now, it is a reality. Yeah. We've gone from the dream to the reality. So, realistically, this will happen and we will get in the Premier Division. If he puts money into the team like he has done in the stadium, then, uh, yeah, I can yeah. see success. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. We would all like to see the ambition on the pitch. Indeed. Yeah. Then, yeah. the ambition for a stadium. Do the same as Fulham have done, achieve the status first that goes with a 25 seat the stadium, then build the 25 seat the stadium. I think if you talk to many fans here, that uh, I come to see the team, not the ground.
It's got to be right on the pitch as well as off the pitch. Everything's got to be right. Yeah. It's like if you build a Rolls Royce, you can't turn around and put plastic handles on. You've got to have everything right. Sure. So it's no good having it right on the pitch and not off the pitch. Or off the pitch and not on the pitch. Yeah. So if you get everything right, you can't go wrong. George, I trust you. That's all I meant to that. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Good luck. So that's it from Darlington after the break. Tash will be trawling around a place called Grimsby.